Hello and welcome. This is just a short development video to show a plugin I've been working on. Some people might say it's a shameless ripoff of a, another tool, another app. A Reaper script originally, but then it became a paid for plugin. At least if you want the latest version. And they might be right. It is somewhat of a close incarnation of that app. But to be fair, the idea of it is nothing particularly original. And it's something that I think all DAW should have, right out of the box. So, let's say I'm jamming away. And then let's say that I realised I had a stroke of genius. And I thought, oh, what, what did I play now? Oh no. Well, you can select out of the scratch buffer, drag the file into your DAW or DAW as I prefer to say. And of course you can select much larger areas of the buffer. Maybe all or most of the buffer. And again, drag that into your project. So anyway, yeah, when it's scrolling along like this, it is recording. If you left click to make a selection, it'll pause. And if you right click, you cancel selecting, so it'll unpause. If you click and drag, you can select an area of the buffer. But if you right click in this area, it will instantly start capturing again. Whereas if you right click the selected area, it'll only cancel the selection. So it's very simple to use. Now for the display, I wanted something compact. So this is just basically an RMS readout. And anything above the center line is the left side and anything below it is the right side. So you are actually seeing the stereo information in the waveform. But because there's only 800 pixels in the entire display, it is pretty low resolution for displaying the waveform. And also those 800 pixels might be representing a buffer that is an hour or two in size even. So I found it to be a sensible compromise but one that allows for enough information to be seen to identify where you are in the buffer and what parts you want to select. So here's a pretty bare bones option screen for the moment but we have buffer length in minutes and a temporary folder path. So this is how Scratch Buffer works. It permanently records but only to RAM, not hard drive space. It literally is a scratch buffer. So we can change a couple of things at the moment, buffer length and the temporary folder path. We'll start with the buffer length. If we change the buffer length, we will lose what is inside the buffer. But then we'll have the correct amount of samples in the buffer for the specified minutes based on our project sample rate. However, the temporary folder path comes into play when you want to drag something out of the scratch buffer, such as this selection. When you drag it, it creates a uniquely named 32-bit floating point wave file at the sample rate of your project. And your DAW slash DAW is expected to make a copy of that file. Because when the plugin terminates or reloads, it will delete the scratch buffer folder from this directory and all the temporary files inside it. So the reason for you being able to change this is because, for example, I have a solid state drive for my C drive and I don't want to spam it with temporary files to wear the cells out. So this is why you can change the path, but I think that is something that all programs that create files should allow you to do. So yeah, you can change it. So, a scratch buffer is actually useful in several different scenarios. Perhaps you want to jam and record, but without actually recording and sucking up hard drive space. Because you might only be interested in keeping something if you play something that you wish that you kept. So this is kind of using it as a retrospective recording kind of a solution. But also... Yeah, I know, it were a little cheesy line. Cheesy little ditty. But we'll take that. Because now what I'm doing is, I'm sort of doing this to demonstrate how you could use this in sound design. For quickly layering things up. So of course if we have the buffer capturing and we play back what we've captured, maybe up the volume a bit, then we could take that out of the scratch buffer and create another layer. 
I'm just showing you how you could quickly layer things up using the scratch buffer. Maybe make this into some kind of like echo. Yeah, like that. And then get this running again. Oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. This was supposed to be in here. So yeah, uh, here we go. Let's get that running again. And then... And then we've got the echo on it. So you can combine things, layer things up. Without any additional setup, you just throw it on whichever track you want to capture. You could even capture the master track. But if you're working on beats or doing any sound design stuff, this sort of workflow is quite convenient because the alternative ways would be to route from one track to another to capture its output. But then that requires us to be playing the project or recording in the door. Or we can open another project tab and have that project recording while our main project is not. But to do that, we'd have to then use feedback loops and take care of all the additional routing and everything. Whereas this is just a throw it on and get everything done as fast as possible approach. And so even in this basic alpha version, it does exactly what I need it to do. But obviously there's more options to add to the options menu and some usability stuff like I would like to maybe have it show a paused icon when it's paused. You know, stuff like that. And at the minute it's just an audio scratch buffer, but I'd like it to be able to be a MIDI scratch buffer as well, or instead. But yeah, I'm going to keep working on it whenever possible. And if anyone has any suggestions for perhaps what they would like to see in it, I am all ears. And going back to what I was saying earlier about how I feel that this feature should be in every door, I intend to release this plugin for free and open source it and everything. So yeah, it will be available at some point in the future. In any case, that's about it for this video, so thank you for watching, and until next time, take it easy.